well, I feel uh, actually that I was chosen and then I chose. So um, the best partnerships are when, uh, when, the, when people of like minds uh, come together, whether the, uh, one, in, one initiates over the other or not. Um, and so um, when, uh, when, when it was mentioned that my work was to be shown alongside of Hartfeld and other prominent artists, uh, I, I was, I felt honored. I felt that, you know, that it would be wonderful to do. So, and I had not been particularly, uh, or at least as familiar now as I am now with the, uh, with, what the foundation stands for. So I, I went immediately, and did research and spoke to friends in Berlin and said, so, you know, what do you think? And they said, oh, this is great. And you know, so uh, I was, I was, uh, very quickly I realized it was a huge honor. Most of the ideas that I illustrate are things that happen to people universally. Um, so whether it's a conflict or some sort of trauma, abuse, or uh, a relation between two sides, usually the issue is not as much the specifics that lead to it or that surround it, but in fact, uh, kind of the universal nature of, of what human beings go through when they experience certain uh, circumstances. And so. Um, someone looking at my work externally might think, oh, he's so depressing and all he thinks is about these horrible things and, and it's not true. What it is is that um, when, for whatever reason, for, through my upbringing and, and um, maybe just my own sense of um, interest in things that are not always, um, you know, that could be done better in our, in our society by our, by our um, species, when someone who assigns, like let's say for, a, 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 for an article, um, a story, what they're looking for is someone that they feel has exhibited or exhibits some kind of sense that, that they can absorb and interpret and actually translate the subject matter. Um, I have now gotten a reputation for being able to um, do these, tra translate these subjects into, um, into messages that respect the sanctity and the sensitivity and um, you know, the, the kind of hardship and meaning of, so, I mean, the, the most important thing is that if you have an image, say, like this one, which is about um, what happens actually to children's minds, to their brains, um, when exposed to trauma, uh, that's a very sensitive and very real subject, and it, and it has to be handled in a very serious and very thoughtful way, otherwise you might trivialize or um, uh, be insensitive in some way, and so, the writing, the, the writer who has spent however many months working on this article, the publication who has decided to do it uh, for all these reasons, the, the art at the very end of that process could actually undermine and sabotage um, a very beautiful, powerful, important meaning. And, uh, and so I now have that reputation for doing it. And I think that that works universally. I think it doesn't stop at borders. My alt, I would say my favorite, most influential uh, fine artist is uh, um, Alexander Calder, who very much played, um, his work was done in, in a, with a sense of play and, and hard work and seriousness and lightness all at the same time. So the idea that he could be very intent and very determined about something yet still be so free and not uh, that he could take it serious, but not have that be what the art is about. I love that. So when I see someone's mind doing the same thing or something very similar to that, I, I respond to it. I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of work that doesn't leave a door open for me to um, kind of engage and be a part of it. I feel in a way almost like it's a closed door and that's not an experience I particularly love. So when I see an idea at work, and I see something and I see it maybe for the fifth time and I see something that I didn't see the first time. Uh, I, I appreciate the creator creating something at a level that is going to be constantly surprising. To me, it sounds a bit, um, a bit trivial to pull something out of a film but um, but there was a film uh, 
where the quote was, um, get busy living or get busy dying. And uh, what I have found is that when I am my most um, satisfied with work and with life in general, it has very little to do with what's happening in the world around me. It's more whether or not I've um, set or have overcome, like set a certain number of challenges that I'm continuing to overcome. And I teach uh, at the California College of the Arts, and one of the things that I tell these poor stressed out students trying to figure out, one, how they'll pay their student loans, but uh, what they're going to do for the rest of their life, what they say is that they need to stop thinking about what they're going to do for the rest of their life in any specific way. They need to think about what they're doing for the next six months or a year or this project and then the next project. And they should be looking to challenge themselves over and over again. And I don't mean relentless challenge. I don't mean that people should not stop and relax and enjoy. I do plenty of that. But I am happier when I've overcome some little bit of unknown. If I've discovered some new thing to bring into my art, some way to keep it from being stagnant. Um, that to me is getting busy living. And in the getting busy and dying, I'm hoping that they don't do that. Because uh, I think when you stop and and kind of resign yourself, um, that's when you are in the process of, of dying. Space exploration. Although I've done some of that, I've done a few of that. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying um, subjects on like artificial intelligence um, what I'm what I'm looking forward to, honestly, is people who are doing more writings, maybe about questioning technology. Um, I am not anti-technology, but especially coming from San Francisco, where there's a, a worship of technology and of the new and of you know um, almost a sense of um, pe people creating wrecking balls uh, for the sake of creating them and not really knowing what it will do social media being a perfect example. It's an experiment we're all being subjected to. Um, and it was never, it's never known where, where it would go and it's still not knowing, we don't know how it will end. Um, so I would, I would love to illustrate the subject of um, kind of a questioning of that. Not, not censoring it or, uh, you know, um, turning off the development of these things because I understand the benefits but of at least questioning, like how do we question what's good or not? How do we, why do we need software that mimics the voice of someone else when we know what will happen with that? It will be used for a lot of really bad things. So that I think would be a really interesting topic to explore.